My name is Nan Friedland. I'm a literacy and ESL instructor at Stanford Adult Education in Connecticut. And I'm here today to share my experience with you over the past two weeks. Students with limited or interrupted formal education depend on orality for communication. Many are not literate in their first language. In my classrooms, we co-create curricula prioritizing real life and immediate needs rather than academic tasks or college and career readiness standards. It's important to understand that we can't deliver instruction according to the paradigm of formal education in these classrooms. According to schema theory, familiar language and content scaffolding must occur when you're introducing academic tasks or Western ways of thinking and performing. To do this, I normally ask students to contribute their own funds of knowledge on a topic before I deliver any instruction in terms of the content. And then we develop our curriculum together. Until March 12, my students and I would write on huge pieces of paper on the wall. We exchanged stories, we made our own maps and books together. We engaged in activities outside the classroom, like walking through town and taking pictures of buildings, and taking pictures of the language that we saw around our school. We would then come back and using photographs and text, we would construct a page by page textbook that we would work with. When we see the picture of the two students who are in front of a whiteboard, this is our normal way of, of um, developing our curriculum. So they took the pictures and I wrote the words. They match these words to the pictures, and then we develop a text out of this sort of learning. On the day that the leadership in our school was made aware that we were going, that we had 24 hours notice before our school ended, we were advised to get our students on WhatsApp. WhatsApp until that time had been used as a platform for students and teachers to be able to be connected in terms of attendance and assignments. WhatsApp is a, is a platform for messaging, text, audio, and video that has been used worldwide for many, many years. Almost all of my students had a smartphone. Almost all of my students had WhatsApp as an app. When our school was about to close, we had emergency meetings in which 100 people at a time were given instruction in Haitian, Creole, in French and in Spanish to download WhatsApp so that we could use it as a web platform for communication. We had no idea at that time that it would be used as a teaching platform. For myself, I had just begun to use a smart board in class. My students had just learned to use QR codes for textbook exercises. My students had engaged in a few hours of computer training and were barely familiar with a keyboard and a mouse. For us, making the transition to WhatsApp was pretty, pretty difficult. However, this is what we did on the first day. On the very first day, I texted my students. What we did in that, after that emergency meeting was we went back to our classrooms and we created a WhatsApp group. In this way, all of my students are connected and in a single motion, I can text them or send videos or send audio messages. Having a few hours just to connect, just, to, just having an hour to make that group was what made us able to connect in the future. So three days later, I tapped on WhatsApp and I was able to connect to my 28 students. 28 students in my beginner class and 28 students in my level one class. On that first night, what I was able to do was text them photos that they had taken around town. Here's one of those pictures, the picture of the student in front of the library. The Ferguson Library shows a photo that the student took of another student when we were outside taking pictures. So I was able to take a photo of this picture and send it to my students. And then I was able to send them another worksheet 
in which they were asked to answer questions. In this way, we conducted a two-hour class, and we have continued to conduct our four classes a week, two hours a day. In my other class, we're two hours a night, twice a week. So this is what it looked like on the first day. I sent the students pictures that we had already taken. They were familiar with the language. They were familiar with the photos because they had taken the photos and they were in the photos. We have to remember that these are beginner students and so we're at a very, very basic level of communication and language acquisition. On the second day, I made a series of home videos illustrating activities that occurred in the morning, afternoon, and evening, like getting up, going, doing laundry, exercising, listening to music. And I, then I asked students to send me their home photos. So on day two, students were looking at things like this. Here I am ironing. They were able to look at the video and then I asked them to respond by sending me a voicemail. I was able then to send them a voicemail. I was not yet able to send them a voicemail back. I was at that time only texting them. So on day three, I discovered the microphone and the audio messages. And from that time, they were able to look at the videos and then respond to me by voicemail or by text. Most of them are responding only by voicemail because they're not proficient in texting at this level. So here's an example. Let's look at what do we do at home with Mishu. So after I made a series of videos around my house, I then asked students to contribute more of their own material. Here's Mishu at home cooking fish. And then later we see Alejandro, he's at work. He's in a warehouse. So these became the pieces that I would enter into on day four, a PowerPoint in which I integrated the photos, the text and the video, either from student materials or from my own materials. In this way, students were able to ask and answer questions in relationship to the videos and the pictures and the text that I would send them. This was the day on day four when my husband showed me how to copy and paste so I could slide a, um, a slide from my PowerPoint from the right point, from the right side of my screen to the left side of my screen. Here we look at WhatsApp meets PowerPoint and so you can see that on the right side, I have my PowerPoint slides. On the left side, I have the thread of the WhatsApp. And so I slide over one slide from the PowerPoint into the WhatsApp thread and then ask and answer questions. So using this platform in the last two weeks has been exhilarating. It's been exhausting. Here are some of the challenges. Unlike our face-to-face -face classroom, students don't have much opportunity to interact with each other. This is a real serious limitation for students with limited or interrupted formal education because they naturally are working in groups all the time and cooperating and depending on each other. The classroom as it has been used in the last two weeks is very teacher-centered. Again, this is not a, an ideal situation for students with limited or interrupted formal education. You can imagine that the class side must be small because of the overload that could occur with teachers responding to each student's submission of their text or voicemail. It's been a little um, tiresome to create the videos and try to keep students engaged right now. And the final drawback is that I've lost students who, for whom the pacing is either too slow or too fast. On the other hand, students have really gained the benefit of being listened to in a very careful way when they submit their voicemail messages to me. My ability to hear them is improved in this way than it would be in the face-to-face -face classroom, not unlike the language labs of 40 years ago. I would say one of the most wonderful things that we're sharing right now is that we're all in this boat together, that we're all adult learners. And this is something that has drawn me to being a teacher of adult learners, that I too am an adult learner who went back to school long after most people have graduated and started their careers. And finally, right now we're discovering new ways to collaborate. 
I can only imagine that in the next week, we're going to come up with some even better ideas than we've used so far. And I really am excited about listening to other people and other people's ideas about what this might look like.